Okay, some biochemical features about folate and B12 and B12. Here you have, st uh, to start with, you have folate. And then folate, folate will lead to dihydrofolate. And dihydrofolate also will be converted into, into uh, dihydrofolate will convert into tetrahydrofolate. And from tetrahydrofolate, you will get active, active folate. We, this is active folate is important for a purine and pyrimidine synthesis. So this is purine and usually you need purine and pyrimidine for DNA and RNA synthesis. That's mean, uh, that's mean cell division. That's mean cell division. Usually this will occur in the nucleus. Usually this occur in the nucleus. So this is usually the common pathway: folate, dihydrofolate, tetrahydrofolate, active folate, purine, pyrimidine, and DNA RNA cell division. So active folate, active folate will 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 reduce. There is reduced form of active folate. This we call this reduced form of active folate, which is uh, reduced form of active folate, which is basically methyl, which is basically methyl tetrahydrofolate. Look, there is methyl group on here. So usually the active form of folate will be converted to reduced form, which is methyl tetrahydrofolate, and methyl and from methyl tetrahydrofolate will convert this to tetrahydrofolate and the cycle will continue continue again because if without this reduced and methyl form I will run out of active folate so I will have a folate deficiency. Now again in simple, folate, tetra dihydrofolate, tetrahydrofolate, active folate, purine and pyrimidine for DNA RNA synthesis. If I need, if I need, how, how can I conserve folate by active, by converting active folate to reduced form, methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is reduced form, and methyl tetrahydrofolate convert into tetrahydrofolate. We need to make this diagram into fully informative. Folate will convert into dihydrofolate by enzyme called dihydrofolate reductase, okay? Uh, reductase and you have uh, also re, re sorry reductase you have also another kind of this enzyme here which is responsible for converting dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate this is also reductase okay tetrahydrofolate needs one carbon unit one carbon unit you will take one carbon unit from glycine or any uh, from from glycine or serine hydrofolate will take one carbon unit from glycine or serine to convert it into active folate and active folate as we said before will will, will need for purine pyrimidine synthesis but you have to remember active folate need to be converted into reduced form which is usually this is the storage form of the folate this is usually the storage form of the folate inside the liver and uh, you need this methyl, you need this methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is the storage form. So what is the enzyme or what is the substance that is responsible for converting storage form and back into the circulation? Usually this is, I think this is very important. Here you have a substance called homocysteine, homocysteine, and homocysteine will be converted into methionine methionine basically you don't need homocysteine in the blood because homocysteine is damage is toxic to the endothelial tissues and lead to vessels necrosis and lead to vessels thrombosis sorry so you have you have an enzyme called homocysteine homocysteine methyl this enzyme by the aid of vitamin b12 will add methyl group into the homocysteine so I will put methyl group into homocysteine and then convert homocysteine to methionine and basically this is the easiest way to secrete or to to get rid of homocysteine which is damage to the to the endothelial cells and to the thrombosis which is responsible for this homocysteine methyl transferase by the aid of vitamin B12 so now I don't need so now I don't think you need to remember what are the causes of an increase homo cysteine in the blood. From the curve it's obvious. If you have problem with the B12, that's mean B12 deficiency. If you have problem with this enzyme homocysteine methyl transferase okay that's mean decrease or decrease what else if you have problem with the methyl tetrahydrofolate okay methyl tetrahydrofolate or you have problem with the folate itself that's mean folate deficiency all of this will need to the increase homocysteine in the blood homocysteine will damage endothelial cells and lead to vessel thrombosis okay 
So what else? So you need to know here you have probably the if you will not have folate of if you will have folate deficiency, you have problem with the nucleated DNA and RNA. That's mean impaired. That's mean you will have impaired in nuclear maturation. Impaired in nuclear maturation. Okay. That's mean you will have impaired in nuclear maturations. Uh, so as a result of this, you will have large nucleated cells. Okay, nucleated cells. Usually the cells which are affected, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Even platelets also, platelets also will be affected. And how about the cytoplasm? Remember? So how about the cytoplasm? Remember, you will not have problem with the DNA, you will not have problem with the RNA and the protein synthesis. Pro RNA and protein synthesis in the cytosol, and the cytosol will be continuous. So the cytosol will increase and increase and increase in size. I mean, increase the volume of the cytoplasm. So the volume of the cytoplasm basically is in So the volume of the cytoplasm basically increase, and you will have also impaired in your clear maturation. That means you will have you uh, by the effect of, of the effect of these two processes, you will have large nucleated cell you will have large nucleated cells these cells we will call these large nucleated cells as megaloblastic cells megaloblast okay we will call these cells as megaloblast so let's continue the scenario megaloblast which is which means large cell large cells will go again to the to the two organs I think you remember these organs when we talk about iron deficiency anemia and let's talk about this again megaloblast when we'll get to the when we'll get out to the spleen it will go phagocyte by splenic macrophages phagocytosed by splenic macrophages okay and if you will uh, inside the bone marrow usually megaloblast is large cells M large cells so inside the bone marrow usually these kind of cells undergo apoptosis apoptosis that's been they died and uh, we call this kind of dying intramedullary hemolysis and that's been intramedullary inside the bone marrow as a result of these two processes now you will have ineffective again ineffective erythropoiesis or ineffective hematopoiesis ineffective erythropoiesis okay so because of this large cells which is basically megaloplastic cells can, cannot get out cannot get out get out of the bone marrow so killed by macrophages in the bone marrow will lead to the apto apoptosis of the cell so this lead to the ineffective erythropoiesis even if I guess if the all the cells become I mean you created red blood cells white blood cell platelet when become large killed inside the bone marrow that's mean you will have here you will have you will get you will have pan cytopenia this is in severe form of folate or vitamin vitamin b12 deficiency 